Hello everyone and welcome to our Supernatural Fire live stream. It's great to be back with you this morning for our celebration service. And you know, we serve a mighty God, we serve a powerful God, and we pray, even as you connect with us this morning, that God's anointing will locate you. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. And to all our online viewers, thank you for connecting with us this morning. Whatever that you are trusting God for, we pray that as you connect this morning, that you will download from this anointing. Amen. Uh, on Tuesday night, Apostle Trevor Subramani shared about a powerful word on the anointing of, of God. And he spoke about where the power of God is, yokes and bondages will break. God's power can push you into your purpose. It can shift you from a shepherd boy to a king. And God's power upon you makes you able to prosper. That is why it is so important to be in a place where the power of God is moving. And you can hear more uh, on Apostle Sermons on uh, which are released on the Spotify and Apple Podcasts every Monday. And you can also hear his teachings on Highway Radio at 12 p.m. on Mondays as well. We want to know where you are watching from. Let us know in the comment section down below. We would love for you to come and visit us for our services at 250 Palmview Drive. Our Sunday services are at 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. Tuesday healing and deliverance service at 7 p.m. And guys, if you're from Chatswood or the surrounding areas, we have our Chatswood Prayer Center, which takes place every Wednesday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Montfort Shopping Center, as well as those in Moy River. You can join our Sunday services, which takes place at 9 a.m. at the AI Kaji Primary School, 37 Market Street. We, we have a few testimonies that we would like to share with you today. Okay, guys, the testimony that we have for today, uh, it reads, Greetings. In February, my boss offered me the company vehicle advising that we could discuss payment for it next year. I was overwhelmed as I was praying for an automatic car since last year. I received the car in March, at which stage my boss then said it was a gift for my service to the company. I want to thank God for my blessings. Ever since I joined Bethesda Worship Center and being under its covering, I can truly say that there is a change in my life and that of my families. Thank you, Apostle Trevor, Pastor Elaine, and Pastor Michael for allowing God to use them the way he does. Thank you, Jesus, for your favor. And this is from Nicolene. Wow, what a powerful uh, testimony that was. And you know, God is performing so many uh, miracles in people's lives. And if you want to share your testimony and as well as your prayer request, you can say, uh, send it to our WhatsApp line, which is 071-488-1177. You can also share them in the comment section below. This is our Supernatural Fire devotion book, which you can get from Take A Lot, Amazon, or our church reception. We have received so many testimonies of families' lives being touched. Amen. Okay, guys, just a reminder to tag your friends and your families in this live, in our live, to join our live streams to this morning. Feel free to sur subscribe to us on YouTube as well as follow us on Facebook to become part of our, of the ministry and receive notifications and reminders of our services and events. We now cross over to our service with Apostle Trevor Subramani, and we pray that you will be blessed. Goodbye. That blinds them from knowing you, that calls them to go to and fro. Father God, let your fire ignite in their lives, my God. Lord, destroying this evil work.
God this morning. Amen. You can turn to someone next to you and you can greet them with the love of the Lord. And to all our online viewers, welcome. Thank you for joining us. We pray that you will be blessed. Amen. Let us bow our heads as we get ready for the reading of God's word. Psalm 91 says, Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the foulest snare and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. You will not fear the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you say the Lord is my refuge and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you. No disaster will come near your tent, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May God add a blessing to the reading of his precious word. Let us pray, church. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts, Father. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be found in your presence this morning. Oh Lord, we pray even as we have come into your house to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor, Father. I pray, oh Lord, that you will manifest your power in this house this morning. I pray, oh Lord, against every assignment and every attack of the enemy against his service, against his ministry, and against his house. I bind and I rebuke it today in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray, Lord, that every demonic spirit that has been released or assigned against the service today will be destroyed in the name of Jesus. I pray right now, God, that your angels will be released in the realm of the spirit to begin to do warfare on our behalf. I pray, oh Lord, that whatever your children have come into this house will trusting you for this morning. I pray, oh Lord, that you will meet them at the point of their need. I pray, oh Lord, 
bless your name, Lord.
Father, we worship you, Lord. We give you all the glory and praise and your honor in this place, oh God. We worship you in this place, oh God. Hallelujah. Spirit break out. Let every wall fall today. Let every barrier be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. May every pen of the enemy be shattered as God takes you to another level, to a new dimension. The power of God is coming upon you. I see that lady right in the back with the green. There's fire falling in this place. Yes. Receive, receive, receive. The power of God is here. Spirit break out. Say. Spirit break out. Break out, break out, break out. Heaven come down. Let it flow to your people, oh God. Let heaven come down this Sunday morning as we are in the presence of the Father. We need more of you, Jesus. Spirit break out. Yes, Lord. People are receiving all over this place. I just see the power falling. Just take it wherever you are right now in the name of Jesus. The supernatural and the miraculous will manifest. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let it flow to your people. Let it flow. Flow the Sunday morning. Drink, 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 drink. Yes, Lord. Of the Holy Ghost. Fill this place. Spirit break out. Spirit break out. We need your power. We need your presence, Lord. We need your glory, Lord. Just let it flow in this place this morning, oh God. We drink, we drink, we drink. Break out, break out. Many of you are receiving. Many of you are receiving. Receive, receive. Receive. Hallelujah. Drink, 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 drink. Many of you are drinking this morning. Receive, 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 receive. Just drink it this morning. Drink it, drink it from the Father. Prophesy, prophesy, prophesy. Spirit, break out. Break out in this place. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Break our walls down. Open up, Lord. Open up the heavens. Let every wall in the spirit be shattered. Let every wall in the spirit be shattered. In the name of Jesus. Many of you are receiving, receive, 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 receive. Shaking up the receive, 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 receive. Many of you are receiving, receive, receive, receive. We want to see your kingdom here. Yes, it Lord. We want to see your kingdom here. I just see people just drinking. People are drinking all of this. People are just drinking from the Lord. Drink it. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now, Father. We feel your mighty presence in this place. We thank you for what you're already doing. We thank you for what you will do and what will happen in this service. I speak your blessings over this congregation. I cover them with the precious blood right now. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in this service in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be sitting in the presence of God. 
Are you happy to be in the house of God? Amen. I greet you all in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome each and every one of you to the house of God. Is there anyone visiting with us for the first time if you are here? I know there are people traveling from Johannesburg this morning. Uh, I'm not sure if they're in the first service or second service, uh, but those that are visiting with us, we'd like you to stand. We welcome uh, Sister Portia, the wife of Brother Lungelo, in the house. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. From this, this welcome, to, welcome into the house of God. God is doing something. Amen. How many of you know God is doing something? Something is turning in the spirit. And I know that something great is about to happen. Amen. Something great is about to happen. So, there's no one visiting with us. We're going to continue with the offering. Father, we thank you for the offering. We thank you for what you will do in the offering. We thank you for your purpose in our finance. We thank you that your people will be blessed beyond measure. Lord, to those who don't even understand it, Father, I pray and prophesy it into their spirits that something supernatural will take place in their wealth, Father, in their finances. I declare that the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is our portion. Lord, whatever the enemy tries, we break its power. We bind the spirit of poverty and lack and we call for the grace for the overflow. Today, in the name of Jesus, I prophesy the grace for the overflow will be upon this congregation. I release it to you. I cover you with the blood. I cover your finance with the blood. I declare anything coming to rob, steal, kill, and destroy. I bind it in Jesus' name. I declare any assignment against you shall be cut off in the name of Jesus. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus and welcome to our Sunday morning celebration service. Here are your announcements for the week. Ladies meeting will be taking place on Tuesday the 16th of April at 10 a.m. All those who require transport, you can contact the number that appears on the screen. Every Wednesday, you can join our Chats with Prayer Center which takes place from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Montfort Shopping Center in Chatsworth on Wednesdays. You can join our church intercession, which takes place from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Attention all youths between the ages of 13 to 35. You can join our youth meeting, which takes place every Friday at 7 p.m. We look forward to seeing you there. Ladies' intercession takes place on Saturday, the 20th of April at 3 p.m. We are receiving many testimonies. People in crutches beginning to walk, ovarian cancer and stage 4 cancer being healed. And we would like to hear about what God is doing in your life. If you have a testimony, you can leave it at reception with your details. Our Moy River services takes place every Sunday at 9 a.m. at the A.I. Kaji Primary School, 37 Market Street. Our service times are as follows. Our celebration services takes place every Sunday at 8 a.m. and our second service at 10.15 a.m. All kids between the ages of 4 to 12 you can join our Sunday School, which runs during both our 8 a.m. and 10.15 a.m. services. On Mondays, you can listen to Apostle Trevor Subramani's teachings on Highway Radio at 12 p.m. Our healing and deliverance services takes place every Tuesday at 7 p.m. You can watch Supernatural Fire with Apostle Trevor Subramani on Faith TV, DSTV, Channel 341 every Saturday at 5 p.m. Thank you and God bless. family of God. Greetings family of God this morning. It's so good to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Don't you serve an awesome God. He's a faithful God. And this morning we're just going to declare that His grace is sufficient for us. Amen. Be blessed this morning.
say amen. I said a pastor supposed to know. <laughs> you know. I just start testing you and say I don't know, you don't know, who will know what's going on, nobody knows anything, we're just going with what the Lord wants anyway. Listen, somebody's supposed to know, amen. But listen, God is doing something. Thank you Lord for everything that you are doing in this house. You know, there's some things I can't help and let me tell you this, not a single person in this church I told to leave the band. Never, I don't tell anyone. So whatever people say, God tells me to do something, I support them. I got no, I got no power for that. But whoever God brings, that's God's plan. Amen. Amen. Let's celebrate the gifts that God has given to us. Because I tell you something, I don't take for granted every single one of you. You are really the gift from the Lord. Amen. Amen. To be here, we all are gifts from the Lord. So I tell you something, I know God is preparing us for something else. And recently God has given me some really serious sermons. So I got to preach some serious stuff. You know, this stuff here you're not going to hear because nobody's preaching it on TV. This is called the old school teachings. You know, when the old pastors you had 
from those days who preach the truth. This is what you call it the old school teaching. Amen. Amen. So how many feel like the old time teachings? Amen. 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 I see. So let's go into it. Let's, uh, so I told you last week about the cup and washing the outside and inside and all of that. But listen, today I want to speak on Matthew 7.21. And I, I did tell you that uh, it is not about the outside of the cup, but it is the inside. And I want to work on the inside of every inner man. Amen. So Matthew 7, 21 to 23 tells us something very important. It says, not everyone, what a way to start a son. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of the Father who is in heaven. There are many people living today that are not doing the will of the Father. So, you know what this verse tells us? It opens your mind to look spiritually into the... It says, listen, there's a clear distinction between mere verbal profession of faith and true obedience. There are many people going to say, I'm a Christian. And uh, we need to understand what characterizes those who will enter heaven. You see, if I don't tell you this now, when you die and go somewhere else, you'll tell me, Pastor, why didn't you tell me? Because what he's saying is everybody will say, Lord, Lord, even if you are in the church. But not everybody will gain access to heaven. Why? Because not everybody will do the will of the Father. There are many people that can say to me, even, hey, listen, sometimes, and I want to get this into your spirit, because sometimes the Lord will tell you certain things, and sometimes... The enemy will also tell you certain things. So when the devil tells you certain things, you say, listen, oh, the Lord is telling me, and you think the devil is telling you, let me tell you, I say, always say this, six months you'll know whether you're in the will of the Father. The will of the Father means you don't struggle. The will of the Father means you move in faith. The will of the Father means God is backing you. You see, the will of the Father, God is backing you. You don't need to operate in the flesh. When the will of the Father is, you doing the will of the Father because why? Heaven backs you. So when you understand the concepts and ideologies of what Christ is even speaking here, he's saying, people are calling him Lord. It is not sufficient for salvation alone unless it is accompanied by a life that seeks to do the will of the Father. You know something? How many of you know when the pressure is on, then it's when you don't give up? You know, when the church is going through a storm, we're supposed to hold hands together and work together. We're not supposed to give up. Let me tell you, in ministry, I went through much storms. I could have run away a long time. But because of the will of the Father, I never ran away. I never abandoned my post. Once I put my hand to the plow, I said, this is it, Lord. I'm not giving up. I don't care what may happen, who may say what, whatever storm may come, no matter how hard it gets, God, no matter how the situation is. But because, Lord, I'm committed to your will, I will fight for your will. You see, God don't want to raise up some weaklings in the kingdom. He wants some strong soldiers that know how to give God a praise from their heart. That know how to walk with the Lord. That know how to persevere. You may be going through hell and high water, but I come to tell somebody, don't worry. God is about to take you through. Why? Because when heaven backs you, no matter what you face, God can pick you up and take you into your destiny. That is why it's not just calling Lord, Lord, but the people of God that are willing to do the will of the the father can shift to another dimension. So it's easy to be in my will, your will, everybody else's will. How many of you know? Some people have planned your life for you. They tell you what you should be doing. You know, the mistake is that when you get other people to plan your, your future, you, you, you're ruined. When you plan your own future to you're ruined. You know what? You can't even plan anything. We have to come to a place. I can hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying and I'm in the will of the Father. Amen. You see, the secret is my ability to hear what the Spirit is saying. You see, not everybody that called me Lord, Lord, because listen, I'll tell you something. When you look at the, the kingdom of God, there are many people saying, Lord, Lord, but he says, listen, not everyone who say Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he says, those who do the will of God, I'm not impressed by anything in this earth, materialistic. I want to know whether you're doing the will of the Father. Are you doing what God called you to do? Because you know what is important? To be in the will of the Lord is so beautiful. You see, the fact that you are here today, you must understand that you are in the will of God. You can't just do what you want to do. 
you'll mess it up. You may not even enter heaven. Why? Because we all, and we think, hey, salvation is it when we say, Lord. But he says, no, it goes beyond salvation. I'm calling my church to obedience. You see, many will say to me on the day, Lord, Lord, this is the good part. Because you know what? We must not think that even if we're in ministry without relationship, it is okay. He says, the next verse says, and many will say, Lord, Lord, we have pro- I will not prophesy in your name and even driven out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name. Hello? Including me and you. Imagine now if we're casting demons, we're doing all of these things and we got less chance without relationship. What's going to happen to those who have no relationship at all? He says, man, even if you prophesied in my name, he needs genuine transformation. Church, don't, don't get worried. I'm, I'm, I'm preparing you for the next life. Jesus predicts that many individu- individuals will point to everything they have done. Look what I've done. You know, many people have entitlement. Oh, look, Lord, what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. Look what I'm doing. And God says, listen, man, no, 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 no. Many will say, Lord, Lord, we did all these things, but then this was the Lord's responses. And then I will say to them, public, oh, people are so sad. Don't be sad. You'd rather hear this word now than when you're in the casket. It's too late. He says, and I will say openly, public, I never knew you. He says, depart from me. You act wickedly, disregarding my commands. You know what, church? These grace preachers are going to send more people to hell than anybody else in the world. I'm telling you, they have created the opportunity for people to fly to hell. Why? They never told them. You need to be under grace, but also live in obedience to the commandments of God. I will never raise a church that don't know how to submit to God. I'm raising a people that love the Lord, but my lifestyle must demonstrate my love for God. My commitment, my dedicate, my love for God. Let me say this. People think this. Oh, uh, because I'm a Christian, it's all okay. It's not okay. You need to have a relationship with Jesus. He says, listen. He says, many of you act wickedly, disregarding my command. How can we act wickedly and say, we are Lord, Lord. Don't be impressed by any gifts. Be impressed by relationship with the living God. I've come to tell you something is not your gift. It's your relationship with Jesus, the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life and what God is doing inside. Because you need to put your life right. Before it's too late, people don't understand. They think church is about show business. Let me tell you something. When you let God down, you're in trouble. Any one of us, whether it's a pastor or anybody, if you let God down, you're in trouble. Because God is a father's will for your life and you made your own will, you're in trouble. You won't see it now. You think you are on top of the world. You know, like Saul was too sharp. He said, man, I reject the word of the Lord. He didn't care about the word of the Lord. He said, no, 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 I reject the word. Samuel, what are you talking to me about? Samuel was a prophet. He said to this man, Saul, the Lord is telling me certain things about you and you're going to put your life right. You know what Saul did? He said, I reject the word of the Lord. Samuel, who are you? You know what that did? You see, true, 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 truly why I'm telling you this, I don't want you to paralyze your destiny. You know what happened to Saul? One Goliath stopped him. You know, the whole army couldn't fight. One Goliath, the whole army could not fight. One Goliath, the entire army. He took a shepherd boy. God found him in the bush, trained him in the bush, worked him with the lions and worked him with the bears and said to him, I qualify you. Now go and kill Goliath. It is your obedience that will give you victory in this lifetime. It is your dedication to God. Don't play church. Lord, Lord, even you shake, fall on everything. Don't impress me. Show me how you live in the will of God. Because you know when you wake up and you go home, you don't care nothing about God. So what am I saying? I put my relationship with Christ above anything that I want to do for myself. Me, I must take the second place. My relationship with God is first. 
How many of you know what I'm saying? So let's, let, let, let's, let's look at this. Because this kind of sermon is going to save you. Why? Because uh, we must understand that Jesus wants us to understand that there must be a genuine, intimate relationship with him. There must be, when he says, I never knew you, my God. All the believers are so sad. Let me tell you something. I am helping you to draw closer to God so he can draw closer to you. I can tell you how you're going to get blessed. You can get happy. You may never get your blessing if you don't know the truth. The truth will set you free. What does he say? Listen, we as the children of God have to have a deep relationship with God characterized by faith, love, and obedience. This is it. You're not going to hear churches preaching this now because why? It's all about motivational speaking. Let me motivate you. Listen, you want uh, uh, exciting sermons? That's, uh, that's for Tuesday. Sunday is a growth one. Why? Because God wants you to know that entrance in the kingdom is not based on lip service. Come on. It's not based on lip service. It is a genuine conversion from your heart. A lot of Christians haven't grown. I check it. Never grow. I tell everybody, study in the Bible college first. Get a basic education of the word. Because you have to grow and you have to understand my obedience and my relationship with Jesus is key. No, we must understand this. That we just thinking, oh, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. And he's saying, you're calling me Lord. You are saved. But you have no relationship with me. So all those that plotting in the churches, plotting this, that, all the superstars, you waste your time. It won't last. Hear me. If it's not genuine, all the plotters, everything, the plot, lose the plot. Quickly lose the plot. Your heart must be connected to what is coming from the altar. Listen, I'm not even asking you, but this is a reality. If you serve in this church, you're supposed to be connected to the vision of the house or whatever God is putting in the heart of the man of God. The man of God can't be submitted to your vision. Your vision must be submitted to who God placed in authority. But people like to reverse it. This is what I think, Lord. So when there's a problem, what do we do first thing? I'm not saying everybody. Some people, the Lord spoke to them, they do it. We want to run for our lives part two. <laughs> Listen, God must call us, God must ordain us, and God must use us for his glory no matter what happens. Are you there, church? Never leave God's will for your life. I'm not even asking you to be in my will. Listen. I said, never leave the will of the Father for your life. What is the will of the Father? It must be accomplished. It must be, it must be achieved. So, let's go on. It says, the next verse says, Matthew 7, verse 24 to 27 tells us something. So, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them, obeying them, will be like a sensible, prudent, practical, wise man who built his house upon the rock. So, he's now taking us deeper. He's saying, like, listen, for you to understand what I'm saying and to get into a relationship with me, I must build my house upon the rock. And the rain and the floods came and winds blew, beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it has fallen on the rock. Let me tell you something. You must say, I am immovable, I'm steadfast. Amen. You know something? The devil can make you a lot of offers. He came in the garden, he said, Adam and Eve, listen. Did God say you must do this? Let's... Uh, Give it a try and add what is forbidden and go out of the will of God and see what happens to you. There are many people that went out of the will of God. You lose dominion. You lose authority. You lose what God gave you. You ask me, Pastor, why can't I get my breakthrough? My breakthrough is locked in my obedience to the word. How I take instructions on Tuesday, I spoke about the blind man. I mean, the blind man they, Jesus put mud on his eyes and told him, go wash in the pool of Siloam. I can just only imagine that Jesus telling this man, 
he know he's blind, he could have just healed him same time, but Jesus didn't do that. He gave him instruction and wanted to test his faith and obedience. And so the man listened to Jesus and a miracle manifested. But when you don't listen to Jesus, the miracle can't manifest because it taking instructions is key for the anointing. So we have to understand that we need to have obedience. So listen, let's ask the question. In this text, what is Jesus really trying to say? He's saying obedience is the foundation. Hearing and acting upon the word of the Lord is the foundation for Christians. You see, we must go deeper, church. We have to go deeper. We must understand that we need a strong foundation to overcome. Church is not a business and a game. No foundation. You can't overcome. You want a foundation. The rain, wonder, fall, the rain fell and the winds blew. You want a proper foundation. You want a proper building. Then you must adhere to the teachings of Jesus. Don't make your own sermons. Don't make your own, uh, own, own thought patterns and your own gospel in your head. And then go off the track. Listen to what the word of God is saying. He says, man, if you're in a build, you have to understand that you have to hear these words of mine, act upon them, obey them, you'll build on the rock. Many people, we don't like instructions. How many of us? You know what? Change your mind. Start taking instructions from the word. Don't give instructions. Only some people only want to give instructions, but we don't want to take instructions. Are you there, church? God wants us to take instructions. So he tells us something. He said, listen, if we build on the teachings of the word, the mic is coming, right? Then we will definitely have an unshakable foundation. You can do what you want to do. I cannot be shaken. Why? The word is in me. You, the wind can come. I'm going to go higher. Come on. Ah, the storm can come. I'm going to go deeper. I'll tell you something. I'll give you a prophetic word. No matter what happens in this church, this church will explode. <laughs> Let me tell you why. I'm telling you something. As long as the will of God is here, get ready, thousands are coming. We're not dependent. Listen, we're not dependent on what man is doing, what man is saying, what man is... Uh, no, 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 no. If God gave birth to this house, then God will allow his will to be manifested and the devil can get angry, can get sad, can throw a tantrum, can stand on your head. I don't care what he can say. I'm telling you something. If it is the will of the Father, nobody can fight it. Can I tell you nobody? You can say what you want to say. You can do what you want. That's why I'm telling you, find your confidence in the will of God and the word of God so that even in your business, your business will become unshakable, immovable in the midst of the storm. This business don't run on, on my intellect. It's run on the principles of the word. And when the principles of the word is adhered to and the teachings, you can never fail. That's what the scripture is saying. That when I adhere to the word, when I act upon the promises of the word, you can do what you want to do, devil. You can come hell and high water. I've come to tell you that God is fighting for me, pushing back the darkness. I've come to tell somebody that when you get the word on the inside, there is no devil in hell that's going to shake your foundation. You might have been through hell and high water, but get ready because there's a God on my side. Somebody better look deep down. There's a rock uh, that I'm standing upon and his name is Jesus. You might have put me down. You might have said some bad thing. You might have even kicked some people out of your life or they kicked you out of their life and told you all kinds of things. But I come to tell somebody today, I'm indestructible because his foundation is indestructible. That's why I tell you something. If anybody goes against the church of Jesus Christ and think they can win, I come to tell them something. They already lost. You know why? Because he already won. 
and the victory is his he has overcome he is the authority he is our God he is our father Jesus is Lord I don't care what you may be going through now because there is a word on the inside you may be supposed to die but you won't die why because you are on the foundation called Jesus Christ they thought you will be bankrupt they thought it will be over they thought your season is coming to end but I come to tell somebody my foundation is the word of God I have to bounce back he said that if you build on the rock uh, the storm may come the wind may blow everything may happen but praise be to God there is absolutely nothing that can shake me because I'm founded on the rock uh, can somebody remind the devil uh, I'm founded on the rock uh, when you thought it was over when you thought it was all about to finish that's when God healed you of cancer in the fourth stage when you thought it will all crumble and become nothing that's when God called you you're supposed to die but because of Jesus you never die you have a testimony today why because of what the Lord has done it gives us insight and revelation build upon the rock that's why I tell you church that when we stand upon the word there is nothing that can shake us so he highlights something he says a foundation will overcome any challenges the enemy sends your way see everyone he also goes on to say that listen we not we need to hear about the other side of the coin he says everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like hey listen it's not my word i don't like to say these words in church he's a stupid foolish man who built his house upon the sand I mean, you know, if the pastor tell you this, oh my God, finish for me. Ah, God, that's why I read it quietly. If I tell you you're making a foolish decision, you say, what do you know? I can't even help you. Because people are so sharp today that they don't want to listen. But you say, listen, you're making a wrong decision, but you make the decision with a smile. Six months later, you find out you made a mistake. You went backwards 20 years you won't even know. Some people think you're going forward. Ask me, I'm telling you something. I know when somebody is going backwards. You think you're going forward, but you're going backwards. When you don't build upon the word and be in the will of the Father, you're going backwards. Come on, church. Saul was already a king. He had a great position of king leading the people, but when he made wrong decisions, he was going backwards. He didn't know he's going backwards. Because the anointed moved forward. But Saul was going backwards. Come on, when you reject the word, you go backwards. So when he says, that, you know what, that is foolishness. What God was saying to Saul, Saul, you're making a mistake. But you can't see it. Why? Because you're blinded by something that is affecting you mentally. You think you know it, but you don't know it. And then he says something. He said, he said goes on. the rains came, the floods came, the winds blew, and beat against the house, and it fell. Great and complete was the fall of it. You know why I'm preaching like this? I refuse to allow anybody in this church to fall. I refuse to allow anybody in this church to make foolish decisions. You see why? If we, what we don't know, we're going to make wrong choices. But the moment we understand that the word of God must not allow us to make foolish decisions. We must be governed by the principles and the teachings of the word so we don't make wrong decisions. There are many people who make wrong decisions and then they regret it. How many of you know what I'm saying? Right there, it's time for the joke. All you husbands and wives, be careful. If you made wrong decisions, repent now and put your life right, align to the word. Amen. How many of you are happy? See, demonstrating the consequences of ignoring Jesus. See, the house built on a sand serves as a cautionary illustration about dangers of ignoring Christ's teaching. You know something, you are in a dangerous place when you ignore the word. Keep ignoring the word. Listen, I'm not even asking you to listen to the pastor. Take your Bible, read what it says and do it. Don't wait just for a prophecy. Why? You see, this one's us instability and collapse 
in the face of trials. You know why many Christians are failing? Because people are telling them, live anyhow, don't worry about the word grace, grace, grace. You know what? It's suggesting a superficial or a non-existent relationship with Jesus which can lead to spiritual ruin. But nobody, nobody understands that. When you ruin, then you understand that, listen, if you don't have a relationship with you, you can ruin your life. Don't be sad. Before you ruin your life, I'm here to save you. Don't ruin your life because you don't want to accept the word of God. Let me tell you, this should motivate us to move and seek for a deeper and a more committed relationship with Christ so I can overcome every storm of life. You know, overcoming the storms. Pastor, pray for me. I just want to overcome the storm. After you overcome the storm, you go through another storm. Why? Because you still don't listen to the word. You want to get rid of the storm? Then you must examine ourselves. Listen, the Bible says something about this. He said, listen, let a man examine himself. You know, even when you come to the table of the Lord, why is he telling us this? It's because why a foolish builder will build upon the sand. We will never examine the foundation. You know, only in Phoenix, the building inspector come. He tell you, brother, listen, man, you're putting this retaining wall. Put steel, man. The steel is costing 50,000 rand. You telling him, hey, don't worry, man. I'll buy you one nice beans, bunny. Forget it. <laughs> and you all know what happens when you eat beans, bunny. Eat the beans, bunny, he backfire everything and it goes on. <laughs> and you screaming, fire, fire, fire in the church. <laughs> but how many of you know you gave him a beans, bunny to take a shortcut? So when the rain comes, you fool me, Pastor. I don't know why my heart is racing so fast. I think the wall is going to fall. Then your beans bunny is coming out. <laughs> you know why? You eat a shortcut. Amen. And you know what? You, you, you got the result, the beautiful wall. You put a nice Dulux weather guard paint. You look at the wall every day. But the foundation is not right. You know why people are shaking and all the different things are happening? The foundation is not right. You see, church, we want to build, but we want to build according to our specifications, not God's. So what we do? We ignore the blueprints and the, and the engineer's details just so that you can save one 20k and then eventually the ball fall, and fall down for over 10 times. Every time it rain, it falls down. You see, believers are like this because why? Because we always messing it up. Why? Because we refuse to listen to the teachings of the word. We want the breakthrough. We want the good things. We want everything in Christ. But we're not prepared to check the foundation. We're not prepared to examine our foundation. We're good. We'll examine the pastor's foundation. Too sharp. Phone everybody. Listen. You live your life based upon what you build. So today, if, you, if anything needs to change, you need to change. I need to change. The song of my foundation becomes the better for me. There's no point in me impressing you, you impressing me. It is not the days of lip service and impressing each other is over. If the storm comes, the rain falls, you fall down, you can't come, wake up again. God is interested in a foundation that is strong. Amen. Come on, fathers, I know you want to build a strong foundation for your children. You want them to be strong. Why? Because even when you leave this world, you know what happens? They must be able to withstand any storm. We can't leave them weak. Come on, church, we can't leave the people weak. That's why when you get hard sermons, you must remember it's for your shaping. Because people need to be shaped right and told the truth so that when the rain comes, you, you walk in victory. Then you can sing the song, I'm walking in power. When you're lying on the hospital bed, 
That's when the word of the Lord comes to you. You built on the rock. I hear the word. I hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying. I have revelation and wisdom. I have downloaded some knowledge from the word of God. And no matter what the storm may be, I will still praise you. Even though I go through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because God, you are with me. I understand the word of the Lord that you will never leave me nor forsake me, Lord. I understand that God, you are by my side. Every time the enemy comes up against you, suddenly the word jumps up on the inside. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Every tongue that raised up against me shall be condemned. Every time the enemy comes against you, you will just come a word, come on the inside. Great is he that is in me, than he that is in the world. Can I hear an amen from somebody today? Because our God is a great God and he wants his word to be alive and rooted in you. So no matter what the devil tells you, you just begin to wake up and sing, I'll tread upon the serpent and the scorpion and nothing shall by any means hurt me. Can I say that one more time? Because every time the enemy comes when you're rooted on the word I can just say I will tread upon the serpent and the scorpion and nothing shall by any means hurt me somebody shout amen why because I believe the word of the Lord I don't have to believe any prophecy from anywhere Tom Dick or Harry but one thing for sure I know what the word says and the word shall not uh, return void Isaiah 55 11 say and my word shall not return void uh, come on it's ratified in the blood so I know one thing for sure that the blood speaks uh, there is power in the blood of jesus uh, and i declare today uh, that when god gives you a word today you're about to shift in the name of jesus i don't know who i came to talk to but somebody uh, is about to come alive uh, on the inside uh, i heard that song many times come alive in the name of jesus but somebody uh, that has been going down uh, when you get this word everything's about to change why because when i stand upon the promises of the word there can be supernatural divine manifestations uh, in the name of Jesus uh, you may be sick but you can get healed you may be in poverty but uh, you can come back and be dead free can I talk to somebody that may be in oppression and you can be set free I come to tell somebody today there is power in the word and the blood of the lamb uh, that's why I say today that no devil can push you down put you down destroy you because I want to say you are rooted in Christ Jesus you have a strong foundation and my foundation is the word of God. Ah, the foundation is the word of God. That's why when I build upon the word, success is guaranteed. Amen. It's guaranteed. You will be a successful people when you know how to take the word. I promise, I promise you, you'll be very successful. Your children, your children will be successful. I don't care where you are now, but I'm telling you something. Get ready, you are coming out of that place. I said you may be in Lodabar, but I'm coming before the king's table. I am coming before the king's table. You see, church, we will never be foolish. We will never be unwise or stupid or whatever it is. But I come to tell you, the rains came, the floods came, everything came. Everybody expected you to fall. You went higher. You know why? Jesus Christ is our foundation. You know why? The word is our foundation. I come to tell somebody, no matter what you go through, you will weather the storm in the name of Jesus. I come to tell everybody, you will go through the storm. But when they look at you, when you come out, then you can sing that song. Look what the Lord has done. Can I talk to somebody that is getting ready for the next level? You're getting ready for your next season. I don't care what the storm may be, but I'm serving a God that rebuked the storms. I remember when they were in the boats and the disciples were there. He said, I, he looked at the storm. He said, I rebuked the storm. And he rebuked them for their faith. Because when you have faith in the word, when I heard the word, when I received the word, then I can overcome any storm. Why? He rebuked the storm. He said, peace be still. You see what the word can help you. We're not called to live our life on our own. We're called to live our life governed by what the word says. So, just a few more things. So listen. The process of self-examination is crucial for spiritual growth. You understand? People want to grow in the Lord. Listen, then you've got to examine yourself. Imagine this. 
I want to grow in the Lord, but I got my own thought pattern about what I think God should be doing. Listen, if you want to grow spiritually, then what must I do? I must examine myself and I must understand that I must strengthen my relationship with Jesus. Why? Because all of that I'm thinking must align to the teachings of Jesus. Can I talk to somebody? Say, my, I must align to the teachings of Jesus. So the imagery of the storm highlights something. Jesus is our refuge and protector. When I build and live in his word, I'm assured of two things. His support and guidance. Church, don't support yourself. Hello? How many of you know you can't support yourself? For me to be strengthened and to do what God wants me to do, I need God to support me. So he says, church, if you want to grow, if you want the support of God, then my life must be built on his words. We must be assured that he will support us through our challenges and our reliance must be with him, on him, and what else? Our relationship with God. You know, I tell you something. To go through this life on the earth, hey, let me tell you, it is challenging for many people. That's why I'm saying to you, the word must be my support structure. Tuesday I'll preach on strength. And I'll preach something about strength. But the word must be my support structure. Because many of you know, because time is gone, I was going to read one more thing, but listen, maybe next week. The sermon is going on and on. Are you okay with that? Yeah. We'll go next week as well. But this week, let me say this. Allow the word of God to shape your destiny. And let me say another thing. Not your thoughts, but his thoughts in you. You know what? You want to know him, and he must know you. So that you can fulfill your destiny in Christ. I declare today that nobody in this place will be overtaken by a storm. No family, no child, nobody will be overtaken by a storm. That I will grow spiritually by taking his word, living in his word, allowing his word to shape me so that, Lord, your word will influence my life. I'll be led by a spirit. Circumcise my eyes to see what you want me to see with the blood and also with, apply your blood to my eyes and my ears that I may understand the full revelation of Christ. Lord, I pray today a supernatural shift that your people will live their best life in 2024 and onwards because of the word inside of them. And now may the grace of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the sweet fellowship of the blessed Holy Spirit strive and abide with each and every one of you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Goodbye and God bless you.